Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel for this October Catching Up on K-pop. So just before we get into this edition of the Catching Up on K-pop, I wanted to let you know that for those specifically who have been requesting, you know, either Pasana or Gum by uh, Yeonjun, it so happened that I had uh, filmed my reaction like a Catching Up on K-pop for solo artists. I had Key Pleasure Shop, I had Kang Daniel's latest comeback as well, Yeonjun and Pasa. I had actually even started editing the video. And the thing is, whilst I was recording another reaction video, my memory card got full, which when that happens, you already know, it requires me to delete older footage so that I can make up space for new footage, right? So you know where I'm going with that. Um, yes, I by mistake deleted the footage of that video completely. I still have the audio source of this video. It's, I can show you. It's like right here. That right there, my friend, is the... <laughs> my reaction to these music videos do not have the video, which one without the other is kind of useless. Is me officially apologizing to you guys for making this mistake. What I did though on Patreon, and I can share it with you guys here as well. I wrote down my thoughts and opinion, like initial opinion on the music video and the songs, like I do in my description box, you know? Yeah, that's a mistake that I am regretting still to this day because I really wanted to share some of my thoughts, especially for Hasa, for example, like that was a message that was really, <laughs> that really touched me, you know, and that I was like, I want to, you know, hear you guys' thoughts, etc. Well, I guess it's still possible for you guys to share your opinion with me. But yeah, what I'm going to do, I think, is just link down below the post where I shared, you know, paragraph by paragraph my thoughts uh, on these songs if you are interested to, to hear about them. But yeah, very sorry about that. And I'm going to verify and double check and double triple check every time now not to make this kind of mistake. On to better things now, hopefully. Uh, I wanted to do like a quick corner segment as always. So last time... I mentioned wanting to recommend a 21 song as, you know, they have had their comeback concert in Seoul. And I was like, I want to go back on a deep dive and listen to their tracks and everything again because I really want to put like my head into it, if that makes sense. I was kind of looking to the music, etc. Until I realized that they have actually on their YouTube channel uploaded a playlist of the set list of the concert. First of all, anyone who got the chance to attend that show, I am. So forever jealous. I still have my hopes that they would add Europe to the tour, but even though I have a lot of hopes, I have low expectations of it actually happening, which is why I'm so extremely jealous of anyone who got to see these four amazing women on stage together. I know that is, if I were there, I would have, you know, screamed, cry. I mean, that's probably what people went through during the very during that show. But you know, I'm I'm pretty sure that I would have cried immediately like tears running down my cheeks the minute the second i saw them on stage again really seeing the footage and the videos and the clips of people sharing their their experience and just you know moments of the show it was just honestly so very special because i was like these people are like me you know these people are, are fans who have been craving this who have been wanting and hoping and wishing and dreaming about this day to come without really any hope of it actually happening someday and these four amazing freaking women made it happen for us and for themselves also i'm sure at the end of the day it, it is also something that they wanted to do more than anything those have been electric because the chemistry and the synergy between you know the energy between them on stage and the fans who have been wanting this you know for so freaking long everyone was on the same wavelength my god i, I would have loved to be part of it really this is uh yeah it's like sia posted a story yesterday or whatever where she was like a 30 year old fan uh waiting for 21's comeback or something like that i'm like girly you do not have to call me out like that <laughs> i just turned 29 so that was pretty on the spot you know anyways it would be very easy for me to recommend you guys the whole entire uh playlist and just the whole entire discography however i still wanted to match the energy of the recommendation that one of you guys left under my last catching up on k-pop so with that in mind especially also because we are you know in entering spooky season and if you know you know where i'm going with that i think i want to recommend you guys the song it hurts the song in itself isn't halloween-esque at all but the music video is just so straight out of a, a tim burton movie kind of and also with like the cameo of isui Hyuk. i would say this music video was so ahead of its time and it still holds up to this day i believe so yeah my recommendation is it hurts by 21. <laughs> Ah, 
this is just so good, man. By the way, if this so happened to be your first introduction to 21, please do not think that this kind of music makes up their whole entire discography. <laughs> that is not the case. This is one of their most quote-unquote depressing songs. If you're in the mood for something that is a bit more rockish, go for Ugly, for example, if you want to go for something that's a bit more... Mm, I love Gotta Be You, for example, which is a bit more poppy. But yeah, otherwise I would recommend you guys to listen to the whole playlist that they have on their YouTube channel. Anyways, now let's get on to your recommendation. So under my last Catching Up on K-pop, I still opened that comment and was like, I see you. I see you. It's not a recent song, like I've been saying, you know, like, please feel free to share whatever song you'd like to. It doesn't have to be a recent one. It can be like a niche one, whatever. Like I said, it's just sharing moments. So we got recommended, I had to admit, by Bang Tan. <laughs> So you know, like I said, I try to match the energy of this song with my own recommendation and it's a bit heavy, isn't it? <laughs> it's a really beautiful song. It's true that this is the kind of music that if I can avoid, I would avoid because I don't want to get in my feels too, too much unless I need a good cry or something like that and I would look for specifically music like this. Basically, if I want to trigger tears, I'm going to look for stuff like this. I'm going to have like my tissues ready. I'm going to be in my bed wrapped in my blanket. I'm going to be like, okay, now it's time to feel. Um, so yeah, those are the two recommendations for this corner segment. And now it's your turn again to recommend a song to us, anything that you'd like to share with us. I will pick one of your comments uh, to showcase in my next catching up on k-pop so yeah thank you very much for all of your recommendations and with that said let's get into today's catching up on k-pop so yeah billy is back so i'm not sure if trampoline is a pre-release or if it's like a, a double title track kind of situation but since it was released earlier than kyok satang i'm gonna check trampoline first and then kyok satang yeah all right let's go trampoline <laughs> Oh, so Sua is back, right? Oh, this part is so eyes one. <laughs> it's been a second since I heard Skr Skr. Wow. I swear. I feel like every time I hear more 
such a Z vibe in this song. I get reminded of like. I'm like Mama Moo and Kiss of Life. This is great. I mean, like I said, you know. Ill? Oh, there's a reason why they did that, didn't they? Ah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like I get turned into an investigator every time I watch one of their stuff because they always like leave crumbs, hints here and there just to bounce back like on a trampoline. That's so dumb. Oh my God. On my comment about how I associate Noe Dai's, like a more jazzy sound to Mamamoo and Kiss of Life. This jazzy or vibe, I like it even more when it's just sprinkled. Like, it's not like the whole entire song is jazzy. It's like the, there's a perfect balance in here and they're kind of like jumping from one to the other. They're being very seamless and like everything is being adjusted to perfection. You know how when you're on a trampoline, trampoline, you can't bend your knees too much. Otherwise it will, I mean, there's a, th it's physics, right? Uh, with like the G-force and like how much tension there is. What I'm trying to say is like if you want to keep jumping on a trampoline for a long time you have to adjust the strength, the speed, the maybe even like how flexible you are. There's a lot of like points that you need to be aware of when jumping on a trampoline. Why am I making this so much harder than it needs to be? All I'm trying to say is that this was really well done and I really enjoyed it. It's really just that kind of song where you just want to like, hey you know like tap your feet to the to the rhythm and just like snap your fingers and just enjoy be in the moment and just enjoy you want to close your eyes so that you can feel it even more like absorb the, the the aura of the song no i really like it i really really like it i also love how there was like a good tiki taka between the, the the vocalist and the rappers okay so now this uh so we are back with the lore is that what it is so this is from my understanding the actual comeback song can i trust my very poor Korean skills. Skills, wow, that's a big word. Kyok Satang, if I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna check afterwards, but I guess this is like the Duolingo in me that's coming out. Um, Kyok is like souvenir, not not souvenir, but like memories. And uh, Satang is candy. Google. Memory candy, wow. I actually thought for a second that, you know, the combination of these two words would create another meaning, but I guess not. English captions, oh, let's go. <laughs> Oh, they're thieves! Oh. <laughs> oh. It reminds me of that movie. What is it again? Bing bong. Yeah. It's I don't know. Oh, 
How cute! Oh, the, yes. Does that make sense if I say this is low-key giving like fruit basket kind of opening? Like the anime, you know? Oh, oh that looks so warm. I don't really understand, I'm not gonna lie, but what's new? That's really sweet, though. What's an appendix? Oui, bah ça, je pensais bien, mais enfin, du coup, en anglais. Meaning? Oh, that's... Ah! Ah! A section at the end of a paper that includes information that is too detailed. Comment ça s'appelle en français? Yeah, aussi ça en français, non? Ah, là, les annexes. Voilà, les annexes. Okay. I cried so much. I didn't watch the second one. But the first one, I watched at the theater with uh, my family and I cried so much. <laughs> The idea of like ingesting your memories reminded me of that. I don't know, for whatever reason, that reminded me of an anime opening or ending. That is kind of rural, warm. It's giving like fields. It's giving like straw hat or like a French bakery or something like this. The more I listen to it, is the more I can somehow picture it as like really the opening on an anime you know, can you imagine the main character in a white dress riding her bicycle and like she's hat, she's got like her straw hat on. And yeah, in between the fields and she's just like cycling there. You know, it's pleasant to listen to, it's enjoyable, etc. But like, would I consider really listening to this again and again and again? Not really. Really out of trampoline in this one, I would definitely reach for trampoline a lot more. Do I have to admit that Kyok Satang has a antique charm? I feel like this song is very cottage. Core. It smells like forest, it smells maybe like your grandparents' house. It's got its charm, you know? Me mentioning my grandparents' house and me being reminded of that through the song, I guess just speaks on how well the, the, the song was created to evoke this kind of memory and this kind of like trigger, this kind of, uh, of, uh, of memory. It's really good. It's really well done, you know? It's just, like I said, it's not a song that I would consider going out of my way and look for it and listen to it. <gasps> Oh my god, Ayu wrote the song for Billy. You know what? It makes so much sense. I see it. Damn, okay. That said, it still doesn't change my uh, my my thoughts on the song and opinion, but with that additional information, suddenly everything clicks. You know, it makes a lot of sense. Like, the sensation that I have makes a lot of sense. Just say my name. I think I'm gonna have to open really quickly their profile because from what I've seen, this is Chejung's uh, girl group. And Hitomi is in there. It says, like, say my name carries a hopeful message reminding us not to lose ourselves. It reflects how we may forget who we are through life's pain, but by embracing our name, we can overcome challenges and stay true to our identity. So Hitomi has now become a leader. Damn, okay. Oh, so they also each have a representative color and symbol. So we've got quite a diverse uh lineup right there that's cool that's cool i honestly never thought we'd see hitomi again in the k-pop industry she's now joining uh well the the eyes one members that are now you know dispatched in other groups or either as solo artist but yeah that's really cool i still hope that we get an eyes one reunion someday but yeah <laughs> one thing at a time so wave way way Way. That's hard to pronounce, or is it just me? Wave way. Okay, let's go. Socks in the pool is. Oh no. Oh, that's a cat. Sorry, I thought that was so. <laughs> I was about to say that is diabolical. No, that that's probably the paws of a cat. Mm. 
See, that's how you won me, win me over, cat. Yes. Oh, ooh. Tadi, so is that in Thailand? Summer 2018 coded? No? Oh, there's a lot of cat. Concept in K pop, personally, no? Sounds like the the ending is a bit abrupt, but this is very K-poppy. Summer 2018. Let's see. Let's see. I can't remember what. Really? Hold on. You're telling me that 2018 was six years ago? You need to stop playing. I couldn't tell you what exactly is giving me, but it's really reminiscent of a certain era of like summer. K-pop songs. I find this one really nice. Now, I will have to admit that for a debut song, it's a bit light. By the way, I hope you don't take it the wrong way. Like, really, it's a really cute song. It's really nice. It's really sweet. It's very catchy. You know, I see the cat concept. It's really adorable. Again, I feel like it's a bit light, you know? By the way, just popping up to say that there's absolutely nothing wrong with debuting with, li with like a lighter and softer concept. Like, literally, there's nothing wrong. I feel like I, I worded it in a way that makes it sound like it's a bad thing. No, it's not. It was more so like an observation on, on my end and also because we are entering or already in maybe the award period of the year. So I have to admit that I compared this debut in my mind, you know, with to other debut this year or so, which is why ultimately I said that this was a softer debut. But again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with debuting with a, a softer and lighter concept. So yeah, just wanted to make that clear before moving on. We've got another Eyes One girly with uh, Yena Nemo 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 Duolingo Nemo. I just think of the fish. Isn't it like a shape? Google Square Square. Ah, oh, are you telling me? Oh, so you're telling me this is the world? Like this is Earth? Earth is a square? Are they actually like people who believe that the Earth is square out there? Because obviously we there is the flat Earth comedy or whatever that's called. A square Earth. Now that's new. Sure, let's go. <laughs> ah, she's so cute. Oh my god, this is so like Japanese coded, you know? I mean... <laughs> so 
stop! You tell me this is not the opening of an anime. Wow, men, even in a square world. <laughs> hey. She's like, because of her buns like this, is she so, what is it? Okay, cool it. Ah, that's so cute. Oh, Girlie, you better not take him back. What is Papi also doing here? <laughs> For a second, I thought I'm. I thought I was dreaming. I thought that could that can't be real. Oh, oh I, I I like the the, the logo. Hold on, what is Park Myung Soo doing there? Can that be considered catfish? Okay, let me just straight up give it to you. You know, is the song my style? No. Is it incredibly cute? Yes. I mean, I know I just mentioned earlier, like an anime opening or some. Thing like that. This tastes the cake. <laughs> this is giving sugar rush. This song is like a cotton candy, but like the ultimate shape of cotton candy. It's like the um, the big boss, you know. This is a near worm if I've ever seen one. I think that's one of the things that is very interesting with music is that even if it's not the type of music that I would consider my go-to, a song that's catchy is catchy regardless. So that said, this song is not at all my style of music, and yet is it playing in my head? No, I have to like make it clear. The chorus of the song is replaying my head. Like the concept is brilliant. It's so good. Ah! This song and music video is so alive. Do you know what I mean? So first of all, the idea of animation, etc. is so good, but like the way I feel invested in this, I feel like the way she's playing with her voice is also making this so much more entertaining because there's so much personality in here. And like the characters that she's taking on, etc. is so well done. I actually wonder because of how much Japanese anime vibes this has, I wonder if she has considered making this a Japanese version as well. So yeah, like I said, you know, this isn't the kind of song that I would see myself listening to on a daily or whatever. But the thing is, because I've had such a good time, watching this and I got so invested in the storyline and the music video etc and how catchy the chorus is. Would I want to relive this experience? Yes. We are now transitioning into the Japanese portion of uh, this catching up on K-pop. So Yuta is, this is his solo debut but in Japan. So it, with a Japanese release if I'm not mistaken. I haven't actually seen much of, of uh, this so yeah. Off the mask. Okay, so remove the mask basically. Ah! Oh, right, yeah. Ooh. Oh.
Why did I suddenly have a flash of like Mia V in my head? God damn. You know what? I don't know what I, what I, what is expecting, but why does this make so much sense? This should not go any further. Keep that vest. Okay, the only reference that I have is Tokyo Hotel, and I thought of that. Okay. Did I spell anything right there? I didn't know what to expect coming in because I didn't have much knowledge of this debut at all. That being said, him going for such a concept makes so much sense. Like J-Rock is maybe even perhaps bigger than J-Pop from what my dad has told me. I know that rock music is a huge thing in, in, in Japan. It's also one of the reasons why I said that it makes a lot of sense for him to have done this route. I feel like even though I've known Yuta for ever since he debuted, I mean, I have seen, I have had a knowledge of Yuta as a member of NCT and what NCT is allowed to show as a group. And here we have Yuta as a solo artist but i feel like this screams of actually who he is as an artist more so than what we can see like nct utah is part of him obviously but like nct utah is still quite restricted like he is in the in this cage here with this opportunity he's kind of like he's open his wings to fly out of this cage and show who he really is it's just him straight out telling us the mask is off. This is who I really am as an artist and uh, damn! So like I said, from my very little knowledge of like the K-Rock scene, even with that little knowledge, granted like growing up I was for a few years a J-pop fan and so I have seen Miyavi's name. But then again he might also be the only reference for, of J-Rock that I have which is why my mind automatically made the link between this and, and Miyavi. That wasn't expected but he embodied this energy so well. Again if you know me you know that this isn't the kind of music that I listen to at all. I feel like the closest to J-Rock that I actually like to listen to is the OST from Nana. Zero for example is a song that I actually actually really really love and maybe you wouldn't imagine me enjoying this kind of song and yet So yeah, you know when I say like this or that song isn't my, you know, style, like what I would go for on a daily or whatever, but that doesn't mean that it can't grow on me. I don't know if it will, I, probably not, if I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Like knowing myself, I can't say that this is my cup of tea and I don't really see this, you know, growing on me really, but I can't close the door to a possibility either. All right, and last but not least, we've got 80s with birthday. And so it, I mean, it was my birthday, like, last month <laughs> i'm saying all this because i actually managed to get uh tickets for their show in Zurich in uh january of next year first of all can i 
sorry, just quick parenthesis because I think I kind of lost my mind for a second or for a solid few minutes, to be completely honest, when I saw Switzerland on the list of the countries they would be visiting for their upcoming tour in Europe, like the European leg of the tour. As a Swiss girly, for anyone who is coming from a country where there aren't that many, you know, K-pop concerts taking place at all, will feel similarly, I suppose, but like most of the time, if there is a show that we really, really want to attend, we have to travel to X city. By the way, really quickly, I know that this also applies for anyone else who does don't live basically in said city. So like recently I went to the Ace concert in Paris and I've met people who were coming from other European countries, but also from other region in France, so like Bretagne or like the south of France. I know for a fact that this struggle of, of having to like book either a flight or a train ticket or whatever and find accommodation for the night isn't something that is solely uh, applied to foreigners, you know, so yeah, just wanted to make it clear. Every time they came to Paris, I was there. And I've shared this story already, but like I was incredibly uh, lucky last tour to have met the boys after the show and talked to them briefly. I told them during that interaction that I was coming from Switzerland, etc. And that every time I would have to travel to Paris to see them uh, during the concert. And I have never considered in my life really that there would come a day where 80s would perform in Switzerland. So granted, Zurich is in the German speaking side of the country, so I still have to travel, even get an accommodation for one night, and it's still so much cheaper than if I had to go to Paris. Never would I have ever imagined that they would actually come like such a big group like ATs, you know, like Switzerland, we have had a handful of groups who came for uh, shows, You Want Harmony, we've got MCND, we've had Luminous, like we've had a handful of groups, right? And this isn't me discrediting these crews, but a group as big as 80s in Switzerland, I think it's the first time that we have that. And I hope this is the first time of a very long list in the future as well. The stadion has a capacity of 15k. It's not a small one either, you know, all things considered. A concert in Zurich may actually be closer to some people from like south of Germany or like even Austria or something like this. All I'm saying is like Switzerland is a very nice country that it is in the middle of everything. Not of everything, but like of a few countries, sorry. You know, I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> if you are also going, by the way, to you to either like Paris, Zurich, Be Berlin or whatever, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to know where you guys are going and uh, what tickets you got, you know. So yeah, let's go. Birthday. Oh, so Lisa got me so excited. Woo! <laughs> Why like a bird? The Scottish base. Oh! I thought we I low-key thought that was going to be a creepy Halloween song But this is kind of You know <laughs> Oh my so serious <laughs> What is this some kind of? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> you know, this song is that. I'm old and poor, thank you very much. Can I? Don't mind me. I will. <laughs> Ooh, pretty. Hey. This is this is the. 
you know, the mm version of uh, of work. <laughs> Damn. I know your heart is under there, but... The flute, I swear to God. Well, yes, it would be a lot of people's dreams to have 80s on the birthday. Yes, of course. You know, when this song started, I was kind of thinking we were going in the same direction as um witchy. From from a uh, psychers way, it's kind of more Halloween as really thought that. Like it sounds, you know, it sounds hunting right there. It sounds very. I don't know if it's like clownish or I don't know. There's something a bit creepy about this part. And then it suddenly got into a more this kind of song, and I was like, okay, like you know, this song is a little. Mm. <laughs> I love it. The scourge. I swear, that drop right there, the little silence, and then the release is very work. I feel like this is the kind of lyric that are supposed to make me scared, that is supposed to make me want to, you know, turn around and, and, and run. No, that's actually quite the opposite. Like, you're telling me, like, don't be afraid and everything. I'm gonna trust you. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I would describe this song as, like, the, the sluttier version of work. Work was, like, business in the front and birthdays, like, party in the back. <laughs> Oh my god, what am I saying? Anyways, uh, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. So this month there's gonna be only one part because I've got, I'm juggling a few things at the moment and uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to actually get these out before the end of the month. So to prevent any kind of delay, etc. I've limited this catching up on K-pop to only one part, but there are six music videos, you know, so yeah thank you very much to my patrons for uh taking part in the votes thank you everyone for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you aren't yet and i will catch you guys in the next one take care everyone bye